Welcome back to the channel, everybody. It's What TV. You're rocking with your boy Ace. Hope you're having a wonderful day so far. And tap in, tap in, tap in. If you don't know, we have a migrant situation at the border, man. The country has been facing an huge influx of migrants um, coming across the border. Many young and old from all kind of countries. Now, in this story, we're going to see where we have young minor people, young children who are separated from their families. In the separation and trying to get to their de destination to reunite with their families, some citizens across America have stepped up to help house some of these minors to help get them on a better foot, help them get into school and start a better life. Now we're going to see that some of these kids are going missing. Now it's going to beg the question, are some of these kids being abducted or, or are they runaways? You let us know your thoughts. Good Friday evening and welcome. We begin tonight with that joint investigation by Scripps News and the Center for per Public Integrity. It involves thousands of migrant children who might have disappeared from the system altogether. It is a troubling finding when you consider record numbers of migrants continue to pour across the U.S.-Mexico border. Many are children and many of them are alone. The Biden administration puts them in homes with sponsors, but then what happens next? Our investigation found thousands of those children are now disappearing from those sponsor homes. Our Scripps News what? investigative correspondent Patrick Terpstra joins us tonight. And Patrick, there are also concerns the federal government isn't doing enough to track them down. That's right, Dylan. To really zero in on this, we picked Culpeper, Virginia. It's a town with a very large Guatemalan population and a lot of sponsors who have taken in migrant children, only to see so many of them disappear. What? These are the faces of migrant runaways. Children who came across the southern border alone were placed by the U.S. government with an adult sponsor and then vanished. Kids like 15-year-old Yenny, who was last spotted with a black backpack getting into a white pickup truck. No one will say where she went. Selena was just 16 when she ran away from her sponsor's home weeks ago. Cesar, also 16, left his uncle's home one day and never returned. Each of these children disappeared from the small town of Culpeper, Virginia, about a two-hour drive from Washington, D.C. This is all my missing kids right here. These files are pretty thick. It seems it's Culpeper police detective Norma McGuckin's job to try to find them, and she says her cases all seem to unfold the same way. The sponsor will take what? him in or her, and then within 30 days tops, a couple days sometimes, and then the child just picks up and leaves. You called this a crisis. We have 21. What? Missing still. On That's a, a crisis. On a small town. Yeah. Very small town. Every chance she gets, McGuckin drives through these. Wait, what? She said there's 20 kids currently missing just from this small town. Take a look, everybody. They're going to take a drive, and you're going to see she's going to go through a neighborhood. She says, like, every other house had a missing kid. What? The same way. The sponsor will take him in or her, and then within 30 days tops, a couple days sometimes, and then the child just picks up and leaves. You called this a crisis. We have 21 missing still. On That's a, a crisis. On a small town. Yeah. Very small town. Every chance she gets, McGuckin drives through these neighborhood streets looking for any sign of the missing kids. Pretty much all these neighborhoods, you can point to a house where yes. an unaccompanied minor has run away. Yes, on this side back here. Since what? she became a detective here in 2018, she's managed to find 15 of them. But more keep running away every year. Could the sponsors be doing more to keep the kids safe? Listen. 
we don't know what's going on in Virginia, but we think not everybody's a runaway. In their homes. I don't know that there's much that they can do. Basically, they are told by the parent back home, that's not what they went there for. You know, they didn't go there to go to school, they went there to work. More than half a million unaccompanied minors have come into this country since 2018. And over 6,000 of them have reportedly run away from their sponsor homes. They're somebody's children. I always worry that they may be in trouble somewhere, being taken advantage of. That's, that's my worry. She told us she's especially worried about Horlandina Lopez Perez. She came into the country pregnant. She was 16 when she vanished. This case is unique in that you have a baby mm -hmm. missing as well as a minor. Correct. There's uh, paperwork for her when she was still pregnant. We obtained this body camera video of the moment police arrived at the home of her sponsor. The woman tells police she came back from work one day and realized Orlandina was gone, along with her four-month-old baby boy. We wanted to know if the sponsor had heard anything from Harlandina in the months since, so we tracked her down at her home. She agreed to talk to us on her porch. Where is Horlandina today? La verdad no sé. Are you worried about her? Sí, porque yo no sabía dónde está. Ojalá que si ella sí está bien. So normally... It's the kind of dead end Detective McGuckin is used to. She says finding any of these children is a process riddled with hurdles. But we were surprised when she said the biggest obstacle is the U.S. government and its Office of Refugee Resettlement, which is responsible for looking after these kids until they're placed with a sponsor. When you call that office, what happens? Sometimes it depends on who I get on the phone, but most times I don't get much. What do they say about why they won't give you this information to help you track down these missing kids? They're just not allowed. What? The agency keeps case files for every unaccompanied child that enters this country. And Listen, man, we might have to start a series on Virginia, man. I hear another story like this in <laughs> Virginia. You already know we going to tap in. Including photos, birth certificates and addresses for other family members. It's invaluable information McGuckin says she could be using to find these kids. Dozens of police reports we obtained document her interactions with this agency. In one case, a government social worker tells her it was against their policies to share a photo of a missing 14-year-old, even though the detective stressed without one, it was like looking for a ghost. No one from the Office of Refugee Resettlement was permitted to speak to Scripps News, so we sat down with Robert Carey. He led the office during the Obama administration. Is this office standing in the way of finding missing children? No, absolutely not. It's Carrie says the office would share information about migrant children with police like McGuckin, but only if it was requested in writing. But if an officer calls and says, I've got a missing child, I think the child could be in danger, can I get a photo, can I get family contact information, why not just give that officer that information? What's to prevent you or me from calling and saying, I need a photograph of a child, I need their background information. But so, these are missing kids, these are missing children. Right, and their vulnerability and their safety is paramount. You have to What? Not a trafficker. It's not someone looking to exploit a child. And that requires some degree of verification. Even though verification takes time. Yes, it does, but you do not want to put a child in more danger than they would otherwise be. A few months after Scripps News and the Center for Public Integrity began asking questions, we noticed the Office of Refugee Resettlement published a policy detailing how police can lawfully obtain personal information about migrant children. Was this office taking this issue seriously if it was really only until August 2023 that they actually published how local law enforcement could get vital information about runaway children. There were communications with local law enforcement in many instances. It wasn't publicly posted on a website. That doesn't mean it didn't exist. We found out that wow. the office's national call center received nearly 7,000 calls reporting a child missing. What do you think when you hear that number? It's concerning. It's absolutely... Wait, what? They got calls over seven thousand calls regarding missing children and they didn't think that was going to be a problem listen virginia if i hear one more thing we're going to tap in
<laughs> Virginia, we gonna tap in. Vacation takes time. Yes, it does, but you do not want to put a child in more danger than they would otherwise be. A few months after Scripps News and the Center for Public Integrity began asking questions, we noticed the Office of Refugee Resettlement published a policy detailing how police can lawfully obtain personal information about migrant children. Was this office taking this issue seriously if it was really only until August 2023 that they actually published how local law enforcement could get vital information about runaway children? There were communications with local law enforcement in many instances. It wasn't publicly posted on a website. That doesn't mean it didn't exist. We found out that the office's national call center received nearly 7,000 calls reporting a child missing. What do you think when you hear that number? It's concerning. It's absolutely concerning. Uh, and I think it requires you know, further investigation. Do you worry about these kids? Constantly, think? yes. I think these children are particularly vulnerable. They're not arriving with parents or guardians. It's all about protecting the safety of children. For Detective McGuckin, those efforts to protect the safety of Culpepper's missing children have for too long been getting in the way of her work to try to find them. This is frustrating for it you. Is. Why? Because it's making my job harder. I'm doing everything I can possibly, but I can only go so far with the information I'm given. She told us she'll never give up on these kids, but knows the chances of finding them decrease with every passing day. Wow. Wow. You see it and heard it for yourself. Virginia, if I even hit a peep, listen, Drop a what in the comment section if you thought this was a little bit crazy. I mean, Virginia, if we hear one thing, listen, we're going to tap in and we